welcome to Really Dicey. Uh, we're here with Jeffrey Tolanian. And um, tell me everything about Hyperborea. This looks amazing. Okay, um, so Hyperborea, uh, the role playing game is called Astonishing Swordsmen and Sorcerers of Hyperborea. It's a sort of an old school role playing game inspired by mechanics created by Gary Gygax and Dave Arneson. But it, uh, the, those mechanics are married to a setting, Hyperborea, which is inspired by the pulp fiction of authors such as Robert E. Howard, Clark Ashton Smith, and H.B. Lovecraft. So it basically takes those sword and sorcery types of elements and marries it to a rules base that is um, old school in nature. Now, you're the creator, at least the creator of the core book, right? Yes. So, yeah. So, I created the game um, back in 2000. Um, well, it was published in 2012, but it was under development for a few years before that. Um, and so, we published uh, originally in a box set in 2012. Um, and so, shortly after we published it, we were uh, nominated for several awards at Gen Con at the Ennies for um, uh, Best Game, uh, Product of the Year, and Best Production Values. So we sort of catapulted from there, and, and, um, and as we um, sold out of the uh, box sets, we went to a hardback format. So, it's, uh, so we have it now in a hardback format, the game. Um, and it is, um, it's sort of a, it's, it's what you call like sort of an all-in-one type of game because the hardback um, includes all the character creation materials, um, spells, rules for the game, and then it also includes like all the monsters in the setting, a lot of them that are sort of like Lovecraft mythos inspired types of creatures. So it's not so much high fantasy, but it's got a lot of those sort of dark pulp, pulpy elements. Um, and it also has treasures in it that could be found in the various campaigns. And then it also has a gazetteer of the realm of Hyperborea, which is sort of a, um, a mix of these different pulp fiction influences. It, and um, also included with the book is a large um, full color map of the setting. So when I say all in one, I mean basically that it's a complete rules and setting and all the materials that you need all in one book. And we even ac actually have a short um, introductory adventure in the book. So you have everything that you need in the book, but then beyond that, you could get like our different um, adventure modules to sort of build your own campaign. But one of our philosophies with the whole thing is that um, we leave a lot of blank spaces on our maps, unnamed cities and towns and whatnot and areas, so it allows the individual game referee to sort of expand on it in their own way and, um, you know, sort of creatively collaborate with what we've already established so they could sort of make it their own Hyperborea. So it sounds like you encourage uh, home brewing. Yeah, pretty much. So we sort of give the home the, the, the basis from which they can then create on their own or use our various modules in different parts of Hyperborea to, you know, use. But, you know, it's also pretty easy to use um, other publishers' materials with a Hyperborea campaign, especially if you're using um, um, old school materials with it, which generally seem to s generally speak the same language. How did you... Uh deal with art direction. I, I look at your at your covers and I'm thinking like Conan, I'm thinking like old school H.P. Lovecraft, I'm thinking uh, all these different themes. Uh, how, how did you uh, direct that exactly? How, do, how, uh, how, how did you choose your artists? So uh, choosing, the, choosing artists for it sort of had to fall into a certain specific type of art direction that we were looking for that would sort of capture the things that you were talking about. So when I, when I was growing up, I sort of cut my teeth on magazines like Savage sort of Conan and things like that. And so I really wanted to sort of capture that sort of feel with this game. So you don't see a lot of like the sort of cartoonish anime influences, but you will see like sort of that old school Marvel Comics vibe in there, but also some of the horror, horror, horror vibe in there too for the various paintings that we have on our covers. Um, but with that in mind, one of our artists, like so you see in this banner right here, um, is Val Simex. Val Simex is um, well known for his work in Marvel Comics and DC Comics. Uh, did titles like, he did Conan the Barbarian and Savage sort of Conan, but he also did titles like the Avengers and the X-Men and stuff like that. So he's well known in the, uh, in the comic book industry. Um, but then we have like, so this one right here, um, and also that same picture right there uh, is um, 
is by Charles Lang, who is a who is a local horror artist. He does he does he mostly works in the horror genre. So, I guess basically what I'm getting at is that we sort of try to blend these uh, different styles: the comic, the the pulpy sort of comic book style, but also those horror elements to sort of capture what we're doing with Hyperborea, which is that sword and sorcery themed setting. So, where did you? Where did you get the inspiration to create this system? Like, was was there a certain moment, or was there a certain dream? Where where did the, the idea to create this system come from? Well, when you say system, are you talking about rules, or are you talking about like more of the the tone of the setting and things like that? A little bit of both. Like the idea, like 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 you just like did you like did you wake up and say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna make this world, and I'm gonna make these rules for this world. Okay, so. I guess it basically started with setting, where I knew that I wanted to, I wanted to do something that wasn't um, exactly um, high fantasy, because we've seen that in so many different iterations over the years. And I was always more inspired by um, Robert E. Howard's Conan and the old, um, you know, H.P. Lovecraft, Call of Cthulhu type of stuff. So, to to create, I've seen um, other. Um, publishers do that sort of thing, but then they marry it to something that really feels like a D and D setting because they want they are including hobbits and elves and things like that. So it doesn't exactly feel like sword and sorcery or horror to me, or or cosmic horror. So to build it from the ground up, I really wanted to eliminate those high fantasy elements. So in our game, we don't have elves or hobbits or things like that. We have these various um, cultures and ethnicities of humanity that live in this sort of dark um, sword and sorcery world. So um, so it's, that's as far as the setting goes. As far as mechanics go, go I, I really wanted to embrace an old school um, Gygaxian feel. Um, I cut my teeth playing um, AD&D when I was a kid and I played it for many years. I wanted to do something that was that had an old school type of vibe and feel to it. So it doesn't exactly um, emulate any specific old school um, rules base. It sort of um, has its own um, individual mechanics, but they're very much inspired by the types of things that Gygax and Arneson uh, created back in the early 70s. So would you say, even though this is, has a very old school flavor, uh, would you say that um, new players can learn how to play the system as well as old players that are played first edition, second edition D&D? Oh yes, absolutely. Um, the learning curve is not, um, the learning curve is not too bad because what we do in this game, which is also similar to older style of play, is we embrace character archetypes. So if you pick a character, so we do have a lot of character classes you could play, um, over 25 different character classes. But each one of those character classes embraces a certain archetype. So you're not worrying about fiddling with building all different types of characters, like how do I, what kind of skills am I going to pick, or what types of special abilities am I going to pick. You don't do any of that with a game that uses um, archetypes. You basically start off with a basic template um, and go from there, and you create the sort of flavor and background for your character that you want. So it works a lot easier where, where it's kind of laid out for your character class what you can and can't do. Excellent. So where can people find more about Hyperborea? Uh, sure, you can. Well, uh, you could find it at hyperborea.tv. Um, and we're also on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. So um, we have a, a pretty good amount of people playing the game. So we also have, um, from, from hyperborea.tv, you can also find our online forums where different referees from around the world are exchanging um, ideas for their campaigns. Maybe somebody created a, their own monster that they incorporated into the setting. Or they want to talk about stuff that's going on in their, they may do a, like a, um, a journal of things going on in their campaigns. And, and, just, um, and also it's a great place where people um, ask questions about maybe some kind of rules clarification or something like that if it seems a little bit Im ambiguous to them, things like that. So, yeah. Oh, well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. And Thanks for stay, having me. Stay tuned for more news.